My name is James Middleton, and you're listening to the Primatech Files. Hey, Primatech peeps. Welcome back to the Primatech Files, a Southgate Media Group podcast dedicated to all things Heroes Prime and Heroes Reborn related. I'm flying solo today, but I've got a great guest for you. I've got executive producer extraordinaire James Middleton. Welcome, James. Oh, thanks. I am so psyched to finally be here. Um, I love what you guys have done, and I love that you've been reading the books and the comics and so forth, and really just diving into the Heroes Reborn world that we've been working so hard on since October of 2014. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've still got Gemini to go and Heroes yeah. Godsend, so yeah, we've, yeah. Still, we've still got a lot to keep us going. Yeah, and uh, Gemini is a fantastic game, um, and Godsend is really really good. It's written by Joey Falco, who's uh, one of our staff writers, but is somebody that, you know, we all believe is going to be a a big deal in television. Um, He's one of our best writers. And uh, he really just came up with an amazing take, you know, for, you know, the origin story of Farah Nazan. Mm. And, um, you know, at some point I was talking to him and I, and, you know, we we were uh, contemplating who could we do a five episode comic on, and he immediately said Farah. He mm-hmm. wanted to do, to do Farah, and he wanted to do a Muslim superhero, um, and we were all into that. And um, you know, then we brought it up to Titan, and we we thought, you know, well, that could cause some discussion with Titan. You know, we don't mm-hmm. we don't know what the issues are in terms of marketing and so forth, and and they just immediately said yes. Yeah, that was a great great idea, and just just you know. Um, uh, dove right in and found an amazing artist for us to work with, uh, Roy, Roy Martinez. So it's it's I'm very happy with it. The imagery that I'm seeing is really great. Jimmy Jean Louis posted a a picture of one of the covers, and it it blew my mind straight away because obviously when you're talking about these new characters and trying to fit them into the world, that cover just kind of blew my mind. I was just like, oh oh, we're going there. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let's uh, let's start off at the beginning. Um, how did you get into the entertainment business? Well, it's been you know a long road, but I, I guess you know it started when I was a kid, you know, wanting to get into the entertainment business. When I saw you know movies like Close Encounters and Blade Runner and Road Warrior, and those movies really spoke to me mm-hmm. because they're you know very, I, very strong character movies and very emotional, but also you know, take these human dramas and put them on a gigantic uh, uh, transformational sci-fi stage. Um, So I, you know, always wanted to be a part of that. And I, you know, started making my own little Super 8 movies and finally found myself in film school. And um, I became a documentary filmmaker for a little while. I did environmental documentaries, but then I got into USC film school mm-hmm. to do my graduate work there. And uh, um, I had a great time there, you know, um, learned a lot, you know, uh, made a great film, you know, there and and never really looked back, you know, in terms of the, the business wanted to stay in it. And I got a great opportunity uh, coming out of film school to be the assistant for an executive named Rebecca Pollack. And um, she was... Sidney Pollack's daughter, one of the best uh, executives in town. And, and what I told her when I took the job is, you know, coming out of film schools, I just want to see how it works when successful people come into your office and actually sell a project and get something made. That's all I want to do is learn, you know. And she said she was down with that. And But then she started taking me to look at dailies and bringing me into development meetings and, and, and so forth. And I really started to love the fact that working at the studio and working with her and some of the other people there, we were actually making movies. Yeah, we weren't just talking about it, you know. <laughs> which is a lot of what, which is a lot of what you do at a film school. You just talk about what you want to do, and mm. you know, you're waiting tables or working as a temp, you know. But you're not actually, you're not actually making anything. And, and we were, you know, we were developing things. We, you know, she had just done, you know, Thumb on Louise, and we were working on developing Braveheart, and so I really started to to dig it and. Then they asked me to be a creative executive, and this, you know, this is about the time we were re- reinvigorating the Bond franchise, oh. and so uh, you know, we started to really dig into what the Bond franchise was, you know, and, and how we could update it, what we needed to update, what we needed to know, and I worked really closely with um, an executive named Jeff Kleeman, who uh, is a Bond aficionado, and 
you know, we watched every James Bond movie made oh, and we, and we, you know, did a franchise analysis on it. And then the entire studio, uh, you know, structure got behind, you know, promoting these movies, whether it's games, comic books, publishing, music, you know, and so I, I could see franchise power, mm. you know, and potential at that moment. So that was a really formative experience for me. And uh, it, it led it led to me being recruited by uh, Mario Kassar and Andy Vanya, who are, you know, the legendary producers of uh Carol Coe movies and Terminator two. And they had, they had acquired, um, the Terminator franchise, but they had nothing. Mm. They had the rights, but no scripts. And they, they said, would you want to work on one thing as opposed to a slate of pictures? Would you want want to work on one thing? Mm. And, uh, you know, coincidentally, I had just gone through a, you know, this sort of Terminator marathon, nice. you know, and I'd, I'd gone to the, I'd gone to the, you know, on the, on the, the ride at Universal, I've been studying the movies and, I, I have really figured out in my mind what what Cameron and Gail and Heard were doing, you know, and, and appreciated it. And so when I went into the meeting with them, I was loaded with ideas. You know, I was, re- <laughs> I was ready to ready to go, and they hired me. And so I got so I worked on the Terminator franchise for quite a long time, and developed Terminator Three, and developed Terminator Salvation, and then also uh, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Mm-hmm. Which, um, you know, after the first two Terminator movies is one of my favorite, you know, iterations of the of the franchise, mm. you know, so it was it was uh, really good. And, the, and, you know, doing that kind of franchise management is ultimately what led me to, um, you know, to Tim Crane yeah. you know, uh, awesome. and Heroes Reborn. You've got it seems like you've gone into a lot of things which has already had a kind of a following or at least a fandom. You know, you talked about uh, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. How much research or did you have to do much research uh, about Heroes Prime to get into, you know, for Heroes Reborn? Well, I'm very meticulous. So, you know, naturally when it was in the air that uh, Tim needed a producing partner for this, I, I, you know, did did a lot of research. But I I have to say I watched a lot of Heroes when it aired. Yeah. The reason is, is it's that, it's a genre that I love, you know, and, um, he, you know, he was breaking ground then, you know, there wasn't a lot of fa- fantasy or sci-fi mm. on television that was really connecting in a big way. And so Battlestar Galactica and uh, Heroes were incredibly important to me. Um, and so, you know, I, I did watch, you know, a lot of episodes as much as I could while doing my yeah. own my own job. Mm. There were there were things that I had to remind myself of and, and narratively. And then and then what I did do is I, I got into talking with the original, you know, line producers mm. of, of Heroes um, because the original Heroes was, um, a, you know, sort of legendarily yeah. complex in terms of the uh, production. Yeah. And, you know, what Tim was talking about was something that promised no less in terms of the complexity. So I, I talked to. Ruth Amon, the production designer, and Jim Corey, you know, who was the line producer and that is now running production at Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they were all really helpful and gracious. And so I did that, you know, that research for, for sure leading into this production. And it's good I did, too. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Do you have a, a favorite character from the original series? I, uh, well, look, I, I think they all work together. The characters all, you know, kind of work together. And it's the, that's the design that Tim does is that, you know, they're, they're, they, they represent various aspects of the, of the overall story. So it's, it's hard to not like a character, but, you know, from the original series, I, I loved Claire and HRG mm. and uh, I thought, you know, their relationship was amazing. And I thought the, you know, the arc that Claire, went through was incredible. And, you know, and Hayden Panettiere is a great actress. You know, she's, she's really good. Um, it's not, it's not super popular, I guess, to say this, but I was also like a huge fan of Nikki, um, (laughs) and, and her iterations because Mm. I, you know, there's just something about the the fact that she had to keep changing her very essence Mm. to survive, you know, that seemed like very, uh, salient to me, you know, because, it, and, and, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, every per every human being has to do mm. at various points in their life that you have to change what you're doing. You have to change your point of view or, you know, to survive. Mm. Um, and this, and then, and her character sort of 
writes that large, you know, I mean, and because she literally has to change her form and, 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 and leave behind, you know, huge parts of her life and, and, you know, her son and so forth. And then later, you know, when, you know, various iterations are dealing with Micah, you know, that's very, that's very poignant as well. Yeah. So yeah, I like that character. And then, and then Matt Parkman, I mean, yeah. that's just, <laughs> it's just a great, just a great character and his power, you know, offers so many awesome opportunities for, for really cool scenes. Mm. You know, it's just, uh, um, so yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of great characters that I liked. Like it'd be hard to pick out, you know, just one, but those, those ones I talked about are my favorite. That's fair enough. Um, I think it's really interesting the, the way that you were talking about how Nikki has to, you know, how people have to change and, you yeah. know, uh, what, what more of a change did we get in a uh, Heroes Reborn than a quote unquote evil Matt Parkman. So yeah, I really, <laughs> I really love that. Yeah. And there's just this relatable desperation in her, mm. you know, at, at, at various points. I mean, she's always, you know, uh, on the verge of, you know, complete failure mm. and, and somehow makes it, makes it through. And then even in season four it has an impact, you know, yeah. an, an iteration of her. Definitely. Um, what does your role as um, executive producer on Heroes Reborn actually entail? Um, do you want to give us a, a normal day to day or just a general overview, whichever one? you? Well, I'll get, I, I can give I can give you both. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's really it's really executing the show and mm. and Tim's vision. And, um, you, you know, a show like this is so big that there's really no one executive producer that can do everything. And Tim, as the creator um, and showrunner, has to spend a lot of time um, in the room, mm. you know, so uh, working with the writers and, and breaking stories and, and getting, you know, scripts ready. Mm. Um, while that's going on, my office is right next to the writer room. And so I can go into the writer room, hear what's going on, understand what the mythology is, and then start to think about how do we execute that? Mm. So, you know, when we started working like that last October, you know, I, I started with really thinking, how am I going to do this animation? Mm. That was the first thing that started to come out of those meetings. And, and that caused, you know, a lot of organization to try to make that happen on a TV schedule. Mm. And then it, it goes to things like, well, who's going to direct episodes? Mm. Um, who are the department heads? Who's going to do costumes? Who is the production designer? Mm. And so I, I find all of the possibilities for those, for those, that, those people, those members of our team. I vet them, talk to them, <laughs> many of them, and whittle the list down. And then I would bring Tim in to do Skype calls mm. with them because most of them were in, uh, in Canada. And and then, you know, Tim and I decide on, you know, who, who our, our picks are, you know, and, and, uh, and then we, we get those people approved by the studio and so forth. Anyway, I'm going through, I'm just going through the process yeah, because fun. the process is, is very, very time consuming. It mm. takes months to do that. Many, many conversations mm. to get your team together. So it's, it's, um, it's doing that. It's booking all the directors. It's, um, you know, overseeing the casting. Mm. And making sure that that's happening on 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 schedule and that we're getting the right the, the right people, um, organizing the entire production in Toronto, booking stages, uh, and then going to Toronto and being on set, you know, you know every day, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that the execution is what Tim wanted. And you know, Tim fortunately, you know, was able to spend you know uh, quite a bit of time in Toronto himself, but but not all the time. Yes. Mm. And, and we have different things that we need to do to make sure that everything keeps running. There's so many different aspects of it. Mm. So there's there's the big organizational level of things that I do. And then there's the tactical everyday things like, you know, I mean, even down to how blood is spraying on a oh. character's face. You know, I remember, you know, it's like <laughs> down to really like, nope, I know what we want here and that's <laughs> not right. So the blood has to splatter more finely on <laughs> on Joanne's face, you know, that, sort of, <laughs> that sort of thing, you know, so it gets, it gets into the nitty nitty gritty. And, um, and then, you know, um, right now it is, uh, all, all about, you know, um, post and, yeah. and, you know, making sure that our episodes are delivered. So it's been a full time job where I've been getting like five hours of sleep oh. every, every night at the most mm. since October of 2014. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazingly challenging thing, but it's also been like the best yeah. professional experience of my life. You know, it's been incredible. Especially with the end product, not just, you know, the, 
the the episodes that have come out but all the extra content it's got to be a very rewarding process oh yeah because and that's right because we you know like we were just were talking about we've got the video games we've got six novellas we got two comic books we did the prequel dark matters you know which zach Crayley wrote which i am so happy with yeah. it turned out so well and the thing that i'm i'm really you know most happy about is you know when we started developing dark matters mm. With with the studio and, and and Zach, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen with Phoebe. Mm. Phoebe was, you know, Phoebe was just a character in the in the prequel. Yeah. Okay. But but she was so effective, mm. you know that that Tim noticed. Mm. And you know when we started showing Tim cuts of of uh, Dark Matters, he immediately you know showed it to the writers' room and said, "This this is required viewing. You know, this is an amazing character. Quentin and Phoebe have incredible, you know, chemistry. chemistry yeah. yeah, and we have to, and and we have to um, do something with them. Mm. So where 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 it was just going to be, you know, maybe her peppered throughout mm. the, you know, the, the the actual broadcast series, she became, you know, the 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 main tool of destruction. Yeah for uh erica she's like erica's erica's left hand where you've got harris yeah. being the right hand yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah and um so uh, and i think ace and paul uh, you know, just did an amazing mm, job definitely. you know of, of transforming that character and, and it's one of the best character arcs mm. in heroes reborn if you if you see her innocence mm. at the at, you know in dark matters to what she has become at the end it is epic and tragic yeah definitely. you know um you know, so uh, it, that, I'm very happy with all of that. But you're right; it's an incredible amount of extra work. It's mm. not just producing a television show; it's it's managing a gigantic franchise. Yeah. And, and but you know, that's what I've been doing. And and um, uh, I, I, you know, I was challenged by this, but also it was just like this is exactly what I want to do. Mm. You know, the, this this kind of level of work. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, we would we had this. Me and uh, me and Lilith had this massive conversation about how. Phoebe is two different characters and you can exactly feel how Quentin feels. He always wants that kind of dark matters Phoebe back, but he just doesn't realize obviously until this episode that he's quote unquote stuck with this kind of different version of his sister. And we really, really enjoyed their interplay in dark matters. And yeah, we, we dubbed them the Frady cats and yeah, it was, really I know. I love you guys did that. <laughs> <laughs> that fantastic. That's really good. Awesome. Yeah. So um, what was it like working with, with Tim? working with Tim was, was, uh, really great. You know, he, we have like minds in, in a certain respect where he thinks very big mm -hmm. in terms of the, the franchise, mm -hmm. um, and in terms of, uh, you know, production and so, and so do I. And so, you know, whenever he wants to do something, you know, that seems impossible, you know, part of me is like, but, that is a fantastic idea yeah. and we have, and we have to do it. You know, as a, as a person, he's really inclusive and, 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 re and really that's not the case with um, every showrunner, you know, um, you know, the stereotype of the showrunner is the, is the figure that, uh, you know, knows all and tells all and makes every decision and, and uh, so forth. And, and Tim takes a, uh, you know, a different approach in that, you know, I think he knows what he is and what kind of shows that he, he makes and wants to make, but he's, but he's very open mm -hmm. to opinions and ideas. And, you know, there's, there's nobody on the, on the production that he wouldn't listen to for an idea and be open and, and, and be open to. So that was interesting and, and, uh, and fun. And, and, the, you know, he's also really respectful, mm -hmm. you know, um, which is, uh, I think, an important thing on a, on a production like this because everybody is working incredibly hard and they're on their last nerve um, and they're, they, they know the expectations are high. And, you know, even if Tim is um, worried about something or upset, he's incredibly uh, respectful, you know, um, uh, and um, measured. Mm -hmm. So that's that's good. And I think that you know, that owes to his experience in the business. You know, he's done this a long time. He's made hundreds of episodes of, of television. Mm -hmm. So that, that really, that really translates to how he is and his set presence is fantastic. You know, whenever he would come to Toronto, it, you know, we, we were all really happy to see him and it was some, and it was, and it was really fun to have him, have him there. That's you know, awesome. um, he's also, uh, I don't know if you know this or if anybody else has mentioned this to you, but he is, amazing in post-production he's oh. he's really 
incredible at, at, at editing. You know, it's a whole area of, sto of storytelling that opens up for him, and mm -hmm. it's it's remarkable. It's part of why he, you know, has had the success that he has. You know, is is that? That's awesome. You you talk about um, some of Tim's ideas and and how big they are and whether or not you can you know get them get them through. Is there a particular aspect of Heroes Reborn that you were absolutely proud of to see come into fruition, whether it be from the multi-platform storytelling or just a particular storyline? Well, I, um, I I really like the Erica storyline in terms of you know the the production and making uh, you know something nearly impossible on a network television schedule happen and mm -hmm. and you know you're going to see some you know a, a, some of what i'm talking about in episode 13 but the creation of gateway okay. you know is something that i'm i'm very happy about because that is a combination of you know a real location that uh we fought to get in toronto mm -hmm. um visual effects creations, set extensions, models, and then also practical VFX plates from Jordan, mm -hmm. you know, um, the Wadi Rum in Jordan. Uh -huh. So so that desolation that you see around Gateway is because we went yeah. to Wadi Rum and, mm -hmm. and actually shot there. And we shot, you know, scenes with, uh, you know, Erica, Tommy, and you know, Quentin and Phoebe there. Mm. We had our actual act actors in the middle of the of the desolation, and and you know, it just worked really well. And a, a lot of shows wouldn't have gone to the lengths that we did. A lot of network shows mm. would to have, to have, to do that, and and we did, and I and it and it worked out really well. Yeah, it definitely did. Um, so, can you tell us a bit about the casting process and um, how it was uh, casting everyone for Heroes Reborn? And did you have um, like did any like actor like change during like the best storyline changed because of who you cast in the show? You know, some some people were were baked in, you know, from the beginning, mm. like um, uh, Zach Levi. Yeah. You know, uh, we knew that he was going to play Luke. There wasn't a casting process, you yeah. know, in, okay. in, in that regard. I mean, um, Tim and Zach had been you know talking for some some months, and you know Zach was just the guy, mm. you know. Um, and we, um, you know, we also knew that. Uh, Masioka was going to, you know, was going to come back. So there were mm -hmm. some, there were some things that, uh, uh, y you know, were, like I said, were, were baked in. Mm -hmm. We, um, you know, it's, it's sort of uh, common, an open secret, I should say that, you know, we tried to get, you know, Hayden Panettiere yeah. to, um, to be in the show and, and she couldn't because of her pregnancy and, yeah. and, uh, um, you know, and also being in a deal with an, uh, another network. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, in turn, in, 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 I guess, you know, there's a lot of interesting stories. One, one uh, is certainly about Kiki Sukazani. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we did uh, always contemplate this character of Katana Girl. But, um, you know, we didn't know who was going to do it and, you know, what uh, a martial artist was capable of in, in terms of acting. And, and you know, um, there, there weren't a lot of people in L.A. Mm -hmm. that sort of fit the bill. And our, our, and our casting director, our LA casting director, Natalie Hart, who also cast Heroes, mm -hmm. you know, mentioned, uh, you know, what we were trying to do to a friend offhand. And that friend said, well, you should look at this uh, YouTube video mm -hmm. of this girl doing sword fighting. And um, so we did, and it was Kiki, and she, had, she did these little um, martial arts videos to mm -hmm. kind of showcase her talent. And we were like, oh, wow. You know? <laughs> Um, we have to see her. So we brought her in. She auditioned for us. Um, and we, she walked out of the room and we looked at each other and we said, well, that's, that's, uh, Miko. You know? <laughs> that, that's, she's it. And we, and, and, and we didn't see anybody else. I mean, that was it. We just, we didn't, nice. we, we literally did not look at anybody else. We just said, and, and that day we, we went to the network and we said, well, we have her. You know, take a take. You know, take a, take a look at her. And they said, "Really? You just you're just submitting one person for this role?" And we said, "Yes." And they looked at her audition and they said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so you know, we we knew that she could. We we knew that she could. Um, you know, handle the 
uh, the the sword aspects and, and and martial arts and what what we were really just you know, um, blown away by though and we saw this very quickly when we were doing episode one was her acting mm. um, and so at that point you know as producers you know that you can rely on an actor to do a lot mm. and that just led to Kiki having a lot of material mm. you know um, and we also got you know really lucky with Toro Uchikado. Yeah. Who, this is his first television show, mm. and their chemistry is amazing. Yeah. So that that was good. I feel really, uh, r- really lucky also mm. about uh, Rhea Kil- Kilstead. Yeah. Because this is a it's a hard role. Uh, it's a hard role to give dimension to, and there wasn't a lot known about her character at mm. the beginning of the of the series. And you know, she we had a lot of great conversations about you know well, who Erica really is, and we really. Uh, and she got it that, that Erica looks at herself as a visionary, like Edison or Jobs, or, you know, and yeah. that's that's her motivation. And and it really worked as little as she, you know, as we knew about her character or she knew, you know, when when she does that epic, you know, glasses yeah. sequence when we first meet her, you know, it's she's locked in, yeah. you know, and, and Rhea and Rhea has been a, a amazing all throughout and, uh, and and really just a great sort of team leader, you know, um, in a way with, with Jack, with Jack mm-hmm. Coleman. I mean, they set a really, really good example for the, for, for the cast, you know, for everybody else. So casting by, uh, in, in LA was interesting. And I, I just, I've, I've, it, oh, the, a lot of this owes to, to, to Natalie Hart and Jason LaPadura and, mm-hmm. uh, Kendra Patterson, who were the LA casting, um, group. And, and they, like I said, they did an amazing job on, on the original heroes and really they, they just did it again. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yeah. um, I think we, we got a, we have a really great find in Robbie Kay. I, I love that guy. We did really well with Danica Yarosh mm-hmm. and, and, you know, look, I, I, I will bet money that she, Danica is going to be a big star. Oh, definitely. I mean, I think she's, I think she's going to be a movie star. Mm. So, you, you know, we saw that, you know, early on and, um, and you know, Henry Zabrowski. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, and he added so, and that, now that role was, that role was really hard to cast. It was mm. hard to, it was hard to find the guy that could, you know, portray this certain, this certain level of nerdiness, but still be likable. You know, mm-hmm. the guy that can, the guy that can rant about conspiracies, yeah, definitely. but you still, but you still want to see again. Mm. It's hard. And our, you know, we saw a lot of, a lot of guys and, you know, Henry was, was it. Mm. And there was a moment where it looked like we couldn't get him. Oh. And, uh, we, we were really at the point of saying, I, we don't know who else can do this. Mm. If, if we don't get Henry, uh, you know, there is no one else. Mm. And, for, you know, so fortunately we, we did get him and he was exactly, you know, what we, what we wanted. I'm, I'm really happy with all, all of the cast and, you know, part, it, and it, you know, it owes to, like I was saying, Natalie Hart and, yeah. and the group. And then also to Tim's sensibility as well. Cause Tim, you know, there's a, you know, he has very, good instincts mm. about, you know, the, the right people for heroes. Mm. So uh, it went well. And then we had one of the best casting directors in Canada, Stephanie Gorin. And, you know, she, she did all the, the Canadian casting, which was significant and, yeah. and found some, found some really great people like Krista Bridges, you know, yeah. who plays Tommy's mom. So uh, I feel, I, I feel like we had the, the A team in terms of our casting people for sure. And Clee Bennett, Clay Bennett, oh man, yep. we we love him on on the podcast. And Henry Zabrowski, I remember when he first, when the news of him first dropped, we were like, oh, he's he's going to be the comedic relief. And then we were like, oh, he's probably gonna he's probably not going to make it through. And when when he didn't, we were like, oh no. And then he came back and he was <laughs> evil, and we were like, oh no, oh yes, no, no, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, well, he no, he goes and he's he goes through an amazing arc, and his his heart and sentiment is is what wins the day in the end, but he, he's got a terrible choice to make in episode 13. I have to tell you, it's bad. It's really bad, you know? Um, so, oh, and, and, and going back to clay. Yeah. Clay, I mean, clay was amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, I wish we had more screen time to tell more about Harris, yeah. you know? I mean, uh, there's so, there's such a great, you know, story to be told about how 
Harris and Erica you yeah. know, formed their bond because, you know, when you first meet them, you can see that they've got something, yeah. you know, that they've been through wars together and they've got skeletons in the closet. <laughs> you know? and, and the look on Clay's face, you know, when when she says, you know, get, get the shadow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, whoa, you know, He's like, oh, I'll put it things are going that. downhill now. You know? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about a bit of the multimedia stuff. So um, is there any plans to go past the God? send comics i hope so we will have to see mm. in july i met with nick landau who runs titan publishing mm. at comic-con and he is very enthusiastic about the franchise yeah. in general just the just the heroes franchise mm. so you know he he does he he does want to do more comics mm. i i you know it, it will really be a matter of does Tim want to close this volume mm -hmm. or or continue it? Because mm -hmm. you know Tim is going to do other other volumes of of heroes, yeah. you know, and things related to heroes. And um, you know, it's it's nice if there is cohesion between the the various yeah. franchise elements, and and you know you don't want to get too far ahead mm -hmm. in terms of of uh, you know storytelling. But there's enthusiasm at 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 Titan Publishing, and and I would certainly love to keep working with with them. Yeah. You know, um, and there's you know they they love the idea of a uh, Katana Girl mm -hmm. series, and Definitely. you know there's. And also, there's a possibility of just creating new characters in the mm. in the heroes um, Universe. world. Yeah, yeah, and and which is what's so great about it because this this idea that you know um, people are discovering or are being imbued with yeah. um, with evolutionary mm. um, changes powers. You know, it's all over the world. I mm. mean, we can we you know we can have a we could have a character in China. We could mm. have a character in you know a character with powers you know in Australia. Yeah. I mean, we can, we can be anywhere and any and anyone. So uh, you, you know, there, it's it's expansive. The possibilities Definitely. are are big. So yeah. we'll have, but we'll just have to we'll just have to see. I mean, right. um, Godsend is going to be you know uh, issued well into the spring. Mm. You know, so. Uh, you know, we'll see how that does, and and it will really be up to Tim and Titan Publishing. Maybe maybe get a word in his ear about that, Erica and <laughs> er, Erica and um. Yes, yeah, I I think I I think I did mention that to Nick <laughs> and uh, you know because there is something really I want to know that story. Yeah, I I, I really do. I want to know you know how Harris became her operative. You know, mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's a it's a like i said it's an expansive world i mean once you get into that that world it's not only paris you know yeah. there's a lot of other people we could we could talk about here's here's an idea james you can use it if you want but audio drama and uh, have have clay, clay and erica act out the story because that <laughs> voice is just so great and it's something that the heroes <laughs> universe hasn't had yet has it so, yeah, yeah no you're right you're right <laughs> He awesome. could do that too. His voice yeah. is amazing. Yeah, he's yeah. he's great in every way. I mean, he's a, he's a great athlete. Um, he's a really hard worker. He's, uh, he's a really good team player. You know, um, and and that you know that's a Canadian uh, yeah uh, actor. You know, so we got a lot of great people out of Canada too. Definitely. Um, so I don't know if you'll know the um, if you'll be able to answer this, but um, is the plan plans on like a DVD release? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the the, the uh, reality is is that a lot of reason for heroes coming back yeah. is that on Netflix, it's yeah. one of the, it was one of the highest uh, binge watch shows ever. Mm. Um, and in a in a t period where DVD sales, you know, just c declined, they continued yeah. to decline. Um, heroes did really well, and what. You know, besides the financial aspect of it, what everybody realized is that, you know, a ton of new people were being yeah. introduced to heroes. Mm. So, you know, it's 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 a big part of our you know approach. And um, I've been working on DVD extras. Um, I've seen the and well, it's finished now. The documentary, the hey. making of documentary, is awesome. finished, and it'll have also lots of deleted scenes. You know, th either, either things that. Um, you know, we couldn't do because of length or um, 
or in some points the stories changed and scenes uh, didn't make as much sense. Mm. But there's still for fans, it'll be very interesting, you know, also, to see some to see some of these things. Definitely. Also with with uh, Henry in there, I think a blooper reel is needed as well. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely cool. Yeah. So is there anything you'd like to say to the fans um, of Heroes? Um, well, look, I, regarding episode 13, um, I, I can say, you, well, you will have seen that we, you know, answer all of the big questions mm. and that we go out with a bang. And it's like I said, it's the biggest episode that Heroes has, has ever done. Mm. There is tremendous acting and emotion, you know, throughout the, the piece. You will get to see what happened to HRG. Mm. And it's an incredibly emotional moment that he has with Melina and Tommy mm. and uh, a defining one in terms of the of, of the franchise. And uh, I, I think it's a it's a fitting, uh, you know, end to the volume, yeah. you know, um, and the I guess the other thing I would I would you know want to say is that, um, you know we're so appreciative of the the fans of of the show and they're and they're really the reason why mm. the show this you know was given this mini series this event mini series yeah. and um if i could speak to them directly what i would say is it's their victory yeah. that this that the show got on the air and that we had so many other things like we've talked about like the like dark matters and the games and the comics and so forth um a lot of online press has uh you know fall in love with the word cancellation. Yeah. And it's, and, and, it, and it is, it's really because when you put that in a, um, a URL, you get more click throughs. It's yeah. really self-serving. The, the, the truth is a mini series that airs all of its episodes. Mm. Is in Kansas. And it ends. Yeah. You know, it, it's yeah. just, it, it is just ended. And, you know, Tim has always said that that's what he wanted to do. And what's going to happen is that, you know, it's this show's going to run in all the international territories and NBC will see how it does. And so far it's doing really well. Mm. And then they'll talk to Tim about another volume. Yeah. That's, that's always been the plan and that's what's going to happen. Definitely. You know, so it's all, it's, it's, it's uh, really something that the fans should look at as a big, big win. You know, um, and we we were deeply appreciative of, of all of them. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad you brought that up. Um, the the words, yeah, quote unquote cancellation. I think it's it's a big bugaboo for me. Um, so yeah, but here's to possibly Heroes Resurrected. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it, the, there there will be something else. You know, there will there and Tim thinks big, so yeah. just keep that in mind. <laughs> and will you be will you be back? If if Tim wanted me back, I'd love to work with him again. You know, um, I, I will try to work with him on other projects in the future. But uh, I, I, it would be a, a dream come true to come back and work with him again. Awesome. Um, is there any anything you'd like to plug your Twitter? Any projects coming up? Anything we can look out for? Uh, not right at the second. Um, I'm talking to some people, you know, about working on another big franchise, but I can't, it's early, it's early, it's early days. So I, I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, okay. I will let people know your Twitter so they can know when hopefully this, this gets announced. Yeah. It's just James Middleton. It's awesome. just, uh, yeah. Yeah. So they, they can find me and if they go now, they'll see all the, all the great heroes tweets and, yeah. uh, so thank you all for listening. I hope you found the interview entertaining and informative. Uh, thank you once again, James. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And download the podcast, Save the World.